So should we start? Uh, yes. Uh, right. So, yeah. Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this evening episode of Pursue, and this is Pursue 12A. And we are starting respiratory pathology, and we are streaming live from Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai, via Kolkata. And the topic for the day is grossing of lung specimen. And who better than Dr. Rajiv Kumar? Koshal, who is an MD from Tata Memorial Hospital, a professor in the Department of Pathology at TMH Mumbai, to talk on that. But before I ask uh, Dr. Koshal to take over, let me just introduce him to all of you. He's a very well-known person in the Department of uh, Pathology and on the national and the international forum. Dr. Rajiv Kumar Koshal is a professor in the Department of TMH Mumbai. He's received his medical degree from Grand Medical College Mumbai and completed his residency training in pathology at TMH Mumbai. Subsequently, he joined PGI Ch Chandigarh and worked there for three years as a senior resident. He joined Tata Memorial Hospital again as an assistant professor and now he is right now as a professor in the Department of Pathology. His area of interest is thoracic, gastrointestinal, oncopathology, molecular pathology and digital pathology. Mayo Clinic has awarded him the Geraldine C. Zeller's Fellowship to participate in Mayo Clinic Visiting Clinical Program at Arizona, USA for training in pulmonary pathology. He's a recipient of the Terry Fox Grant. In addition to routine diagnostic work, he looks after administrative responsibility of establishing the digital pathology network across various centers of Tata Medical Center. He has many publications, national and international, a very, very well-known person in thoracic, GI, and oncopathology, and molecular pathology. Before I ask Dr. Koshal to take over, let me just request you to keep your mic muted, your camera off, and please don't share your screen. With this, let me request uh, Dr. Koshal, sir, please take over and start your presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nadeem, for the kind introduction. And uh, uh, so today we are going to start with the, the new session that is on the respiratory pathology. And uh, I'm going to talk uh, the first uh, first talk on, on this topic that is on the grossing of the lung specimen. Uh, before I actually go uh, to the grossing of the lung specimen, uh, just to brief uh, all the residents, there are some few fundamentals of the grossing. Uh, uh, that includes proper orientation of the specimen, taking the proper measurements of both the specimen as well as the lesion, uh, identify the lesion and uh, uh, ink the surgical margin and sample adequately, uh, the, the lesion, as the tumor along with the normal surfaces and assess the margin. So these are the, uh, the common basic which uh, comes uh, for the grossing of any specimen. And uh, why uh, we need a meticulous grossing because uh, one uh, and the foremost important thing it is confirms that uh, the diagnosis which is offered preoperatively on the biopsy, uh, especially uh, it is very much relevant uh, uh, in cases of the malignant uh, cases where as a pathologist plays a vital role uh, because they have to offer a TNM staging and uh, also comment on other adverse prognostic factors which guides the further uh, for the treatment of the patient and uh, in addition now uh, coming uh, in uh, many therapies are coming into the role uh, into the play uh, like many of more many of the patients they receive new adjuvant therapy and as a pathologist we have to uh, give the information about the response assessment so with this background i start uh, go to uh, the topic of today uh, that is the uh, grossing of the lung. Uh, so before grossing of any specimen, uh, we have to orient uh, ourselves with the normal surgical anatomy of that particular organ. And the surgical anatomy of the lung is uh, uh, not uh, very complex. We all know there are two uh, uh, right and left lung and uh, the difference between the two uh, is, is that uh, in the left side there are two lobes whereas in the right side there are uh, three, three lobes and uh, there is prominent lingular segment on the left side. So if they, you have a pneumonectomy specimens, uh, then orientation is usually not a problem. Uh, and But 
when we cross these specimen we have to keep these five basic components in mind uh, around which the whole uh, the crossing or uh, or any lesion of the of the lung uh, move around that is airways uh, that includes your tracheobronchial trees uh, lung parenchyma that means uh, including your alveolar spaces and pleural pleural surface vessels and the lymph nodes so these are the five basic components uh, we have to keep in mind when we are dealing with a lung specimen because as i mentioned that uh, all uh, you have to look for the lesions and the involvement around these structures uh, next moving on to the what type of specimens uh, so these i have enumerated few uh, list of specimen which you commonly uh, uh, encounter uh, when you are dealing with a lung specimen and these specimens are common to both uh, pneumonia uh, when you are either you are dealing with a, a neoplastic lesion or non neoplastic because in some uh, cases uh, although there is no malignancy it also uh, uh, they uh, uh, the, the surgeon has to remove part of the lung because uh, especially if the lung uh, functions are uh, not adequately maintained Uh, so the common specimen which uh, we encounter is the pneumonectomy specimen uh, in which uh, entire lung is removed uh, this is a uh, re relatively this procedure is easy for the surgeon because uh, they don't have to dissect out anything uh, and uh, uh, but uh, if you see the for further course of life of the patient then uh, the patient who undergoes pneumonectomy the post operative course is uh, uh, not that good because they are, uh, they have to depend only on the lung one lung so with that uh, the conservative surgeries came into the play and now many uh, most of the times we and especially in our center we come across lo uh, uh, other surgeries like lobectomy which which one uh, lobe is removed sleeve lobectomy wedge resection segmentectomy and end block resections are done only when there is a extensive uh, uh, extensive disease which might involve the uh, chest wall or the adjacent structure so we have to keep in the mind uh, uh, which uh, what is the specimen type uh, this whole another important thing uh, after you uh, notice which type of specimen uh, we have to go to the clinical details uh, uh, including the site of uh, specimen and the type of the surgery which is done always check the radiological uh, details because they play a very crucial uh, uh, part when you are dealing or grossing the lung specimen uh, it's because radiological uh, information gives uh, very uh, important information about the location of the lesion if there are single lesion or multiple lesions uh, 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 like new model like pet ct they give uh, very uh, good information about the lymph node status even pre operatively and uh, about the adjacent lung so why these things are important uh, because when if you are already aware of the uh, radiological in, uh, information you do your grossing very meticulously and you especially pay the attentions to uh, about uh, these uh, features uh, another important thing uh, we have to uh, if there is a, any history of uh, uh, new uh, new adjuvant therapy that should be conveyed to the pathologist because uh, now uh, uh, post post new adjuvant therapy specimens they need to be dealt uh, separately so the, as i stressed earlier that you have to make a good relationship with your uh, radiologist and keep on asking them uh, about the uh, the imaging findings uh, if in if you are in any diagnostic uh, dilemma about the uh, while, while grossing of these lesions and you should not refrain from calling radiologist calling surgeons to the grossing room if you have any diag uh, 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 diagnostic dilemma uh, just to give you a few examples or show you the radiology because how it plays uh, as we can see there is a large lesion in the uh, in, in the lung but at the same time there is uh, there are another lesions um, which can uh, be seen as a uh, as uh, this pointed here so why these uh, the information about these lesions are important because it changes the stage of the of the disease and uh, if as a pathologist we miss uh, this region we are we going to do injustice to the uh, to the patient and there can be some circumstances although you have received a, a very large uh, lobectomy or or a pneumonectomy specimen uh, but uh, you find it very difficult to localize the lesion like in this case uh, there is a very small lesion uh, which is grossly very difficult to appreciate but if you check with the imaging findings uh, and then go back to the specimen then it it becomes very easy uh, for us 
so uh, as i uh, mentioned in my first slide that first and foremost uh, uh, first step is to orient the specimen properly and we in, in, when dealing with the lung specimen we should try to orient in such a way that uh, we are able to correlate it with the imaging or radiology findings so that's why i have stress so that the uh, uh, the uh, many times we see a very detailed report on on the radiology that that this tumor is infiltrating all these uh, these structures so if you orient the specimen properly so those orientation and the correlation with the radiological findings can be easily made make out and always uh, try to to the photograph uh, the, the specimen because uh, it helps in the, or, uh, us in the future uh, so uh, after you did uh, orient the specimen the first and uh, is step uh, is uh, to examine the specimen in the fresh state uh, externally uh, uh, and so uh, care should be uh, given uh, to the two more important most important thing to the pleural surf uh, surface pleural aspect of, of the of the lung and uh, to the bronchus or the vascular margin so so if you are find if you find anything abnormal on those uh, in those uh, uh, aspects we have to uh, record it uh, i'll come to those details uh, eventually uh, uh, the first then uh, as for a, 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 any specimen uh, first step is the is to properly fix the lung because if you don't fix the lung properly uh, you will see lot of autolysis auto because lung is uh, although it is a very spongy organ uh the, uh the there is a lot of blood and uh, also inside it and the uh, autolysis uh, happens very uh, promptly especially in the lung if you don't fix it properly so there are uh, some um, how to fix the lung as compared to other uh, specimens now it is recommended the perfusion method is is, is very good for uh, fixation of the lung specimens that means you should not cut open the uh, the lung but try to instill the formalin from the bronchus or the bronchioles so uh, for which uh, uh, what is done is a large syringe is taken and through that the, the formalin is infused into the into the lung and if there are small specimens even you can uh, inject some formalin through the pleural uh, uh, aspect and these specimens should be kept in the formalin for minimum of um, uh, 24 hours always use 10% buffer formula. I'll just show you a video. Before processing the lung specimens, they should be distended with formula. This can be achieved by instilling formalin via the bronchus. One can either do this using a flexible tube with a reservoir or a large volume syringe with a wide nozzle as you see me doing it. In segmentectomy specimens, the lung is inflated by injecting formalin through the pleural surface using a needle and syringe. The specimen is distended until the pleura is smooth and the specimen is then placed in a large volume of formalin and allowed to fix for approximately 24 hours. So this is uh, how we fix the, the lung specimen. Uh, now, uh, after the specimen is fixed, the next is to, uh, to dissect the, 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 the specimen and the the, up, the aim of dissection and, the, and we are dealing with the lung specimen uh, is such it should be such that it exposes the lesion in such a way that orientation with the surrounding structure should be maintained and again i am stressing again that always look for and check for the for the radiological finding uh, to localize the lesion because sometimes it is very difficult to locate and uh, and identify the the lesion grossly it is always better to palpate the specimen uh, because sometimes you can visually miss the lesion, but if you palpate it, uh, you, you can easily identify uh, the area of uh, the area where the lesion is located. And another important thing uh, is to inspect the pleural surfaces very carefully if there is any area of uh, thickening, puckering, or retraction, so that indicates the tumor is sitting just beneath it. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, we start with the with the external examination and why the comment on the pleura is very important because if especially when you are dealing with a neoplastic lesion then any uh, in, involvement of the visceral pleura that means the tumor is t2 uh, stage and as you can see otherwise the pleura is very smooth and shiny but uh, there is an area where you can see the opacity there can be areas which shows puckering uh, and uh, 
uh, very uh, and sometimes you can even uh, see the nodular nodularity on the pleural aspect so uh, so it is very important uh, to uh, to look for these uh, these areas and uh, all those uh, the areas which uh, and it is mandatory to sample the area which is closest to the pleural aspect uh, and why it is important because even if you don't see the tumor which is directly breaching uh, the pleural aspect so this is the normal uh, pleura and evg stain done on that and the internal layer there is called internal elastic lamina which is highlighted by uh, uh, by uh, elastin stain so even if the tumor if, if it doesn't reach the surface Uh, but if it it breaches the internal elastic lamina which can be very well demonstrated here the tumor is uh, considered to be involving the pleura and we have we have to upstage that uh, disease and so why uh, so if the tumor the pleura is free it is called uh, labeled as pl0 whereas pl1 and pl2 means pl2 uh, means if the surface is involved and uh, only if the internal elastic lamina is breached so both of these has a similar outcomes uh, so that's why the uh, the, in, the relevance was given to the to the involvement of the pleural aspect next uh, uh, and this is again an example just to show that morphologically is many times you feel you sometimes we feel that the tumor is away from the pleura and it, it is free and if you do the Uh, elastin stain as uh, as done in this case we can see the tumor is well beyond the interelastic lamina so that is another important thing uh, uh, to, to when we are dealing with the lung specimen not only we have to pay attention to the pleural aspect grossly but we have to make an attempt to sample those areas where the tumor is closest to the uh, to the pleura uh, in addition to the uh, we also need to look uh, for is there any any additional structure which are attached to the uh, pleural aspect it can either be look like a, a fat or uh, or some of the uh, some some vessels or pericardium so those structures also need to be identified carefully and uh, especially if uh, uh, if there is a chest wall structures are attached then we also need to Uh, sample the margins from from this area. Uh, so this was about the external surface, and then moving on uh, to the uh, margins. So what are the type of the margins? Which uh, why I am coming uh, to the margins first because it's always better to sample uh, uh, the margins uh, before you uh, actually dissect the specimen. So there are two uh, margins which are uh, very uh, which are most important. Uh, one one is the bronchial or vascular cut margins. and second is the lung parenchymal cut margin so if you have uh, a pneumonectomy specimen or uh, in those cases uh, or even a lobectomy specimen so in those cases there will be only one margin that is a, a bronchial or the vascular cut margin so but if there is a wedge resection in those cases we have to sample the parenchymal cut margin which i'll demonstrate in a video subsequently and if there as i mentioned earlier if there are any adjacent structures also attached we have to sample the margins of uh, those structures especially um, some many times you see the part of the rib also attached to the uh, pleural aspect so as uh, demonstrated here uh, this is the uh, the lobectomy specimen and you can see this is a this is the surface the, the surface becomes the bronchial margin and which is sliced and you can uh, say that the tumor is protruding into the bronchial in, into the lumen of the bronchus and even after a single uh, single slice of the of the of the bronchus you you uh, sometimes you feel that tumor is very close to the to the uh, surface so that it becomes very uh, while sampling these uh, margins you have to be very careful and uh, when uh, will you call that margin to be involved uh, uh, so if you see a uh, in situ carcinoma uh, in the in the lining epithelium or if the invasive carcinoma is adherent to the lumen so only in those situations uh, you will call it as a as a positive margin because sometime we do see the cases in which the tumor is just protruding into the uh, to the lumen whereas the wall is free and so it so in those but in those cases uh, you have to be very careful when sampling the the margin 
and some and if you are seeing in the sub mucosa there is a lymphatics uh, uh, are showing the tumor but the margin overlying margin is is free you have to report it uh, but in those case the, those cases uh, there is for a surgeon there is no need to uh, revise it so sometimes these cases come uh, as a intraoperative or the frozen section diagnosis uh, so but if the, any margin which come positive uh, after surgery uh, then the, the surgeons can't open just to re revise it their patient need to undergo adjuvant radiation uh, if if you report any margin positive so you have we have to be very careful when reporting is margin just some precautions and the uh, notes uh, when dealing with these margins uh, so bronchial margin you take as a shave margin i hope everyone of you know uh, what uh, what the difference between shave and the and the radial margin uh, so and while while uh, embedding these uh, these margins we have to very careful as, as i showed in the uh, first gross picture that the tumor sometimes is very close so the cutting surface should be uh, and it should be uh, care very carefully embedded and uh, it should be kept on the uh, on the lower side and before we call any margin as a negative uh, you have to make a attempt that to to see the full circumference as we, as illustrated here uh, and um, for that sometimes we have to do even the multiple serial sections or it is recommended to examine at least six serial sections before you call a margin as a true negative so otherwise there can uh, you can miss uh, you might miss some of the uh, of the lesion being being positive and the patient might end up with a very early recurrence uh, for uh, for parenchymal cut margin it can be either shave or radial depending on how uh, how far the tumor is located from the from the margin we have to cut for, for parenchymal cut margin before sampling we have to cut the staples very carefully because uh, if the staples are remain in the tissue then it uh, uh, might damage your uh, microtome uh, blades and because and these sections are very difficult to uh, to cut so you have to be very carefully remove all the blades uh, from the parenchymal cut margin and uh, it is if it, the tumor is close so better to take a radial margin where you can see the actual the ink uh, at the one edge of the margin and the tumor so you can actually measure the distance of the margin so these are the few recommendations for the margins next step is about the slicing of the of the lung specimen uh, so there are uh, the, you can cut open the lung uh, in uh, many ways and it is not it all depend on the type of the specimen the suspected nature of the lesion and the its location so uh, so uh, it is not mandatory you have to cut it always transversely or along the airway so it, depending on the, so the here you can see this this in this um, uh, uh, cartoon it is showing that specimen is op is open along the airways so this is very uh, uh, good if the the tumor is centrally located and close to the, the to the airways in the, in which the uh, you can well demonstrate the relationship of the of the tumor along uh, to the airways uh, but uh, the transfer sectioning is also uh, commonly done so as i mentioned earlier that it all depends on the depending on the location uh, of, of the lesion and there are no hard and fast rule uh, in which way we have to uh, cut the the uh, or cut or slice the lung specimen so uh, another uh, the next step is when we are uh, when we are slicing the lung specimen uh, we have to make a uh, attempt first to after you localize the lesion to di to make a multi give a multiple serial uh, slices from top to bottom uh, of the specimen and uh, spread them as uh, as is illustrated in this uh, photograph and after after that you have to examine each and every slice very carefully because there can be very small subtle uh, lesions or the nodules which you you are likely to, uh, to to miss so in this way uh, in this fashion uh, uh, you the orientation with the radiological uh, details can be very well appreciated and now we can uh, from after you spread this like this we can very well appreciate that from slice 8 to to 12 they they contain the uh, definitive lesion and then accordingly you can sample 
uh, the areas of the tumor section very carefully like the the section a is the tumor along with the with the bronchus uh, b is a random section of the, of of the tumor c is along with the pleura so and uh, e is a, another uh, distant lesion which was there so you can take and uh, by doing this meticulous grossing or the dissection you can select uh, your sections very judiciously and without missing any um, any representative area so this just to give you uh, another example of a of a case there is a nice uh, 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 negre white tumor and these uh, as you can see both the areas which has a, uh, i put a star and an arrow so the area which is uh, uh, towards the the arrow it is more close to the pleura and almost it has breached it uh, so we have to sample Uh, this particular area in this case rather than sampling for the pleural aspect uh, the area which is uh, marked with the, with the yellow star uh, another star which i put uh, there is another tiny nodule which was also uh, present which is away from the uh, uh, away from the large mass i will come to why it is relevant to identify these uh, these tiny tiny nodules in the adjacent lung subsequently and uh, there is some uh, depending on the uh, the sometimes you can uh, see the tumor which are predominantly pleural based and the gross diagnosis in this case is a, is a mesothelioma here you can see there is the pleura is markedly thickened whereas the lung parenchyma is, is normal and uh, in, in the other case there is only the thickening is well appreciated only on the diaphragmatic aspect whereas the whole of the lobe Uh, neumonectomy specimen was grossly uh, uh, looking uh, looking normal so we have to very careful uh, in evaluating these uh, cases now i'll play a 2 to 3 minute video first in whether the specimen is of the left or the right lung and the type of procedure that segmentectomy lobectomy or neumonectomy orientate the specimen i prefer to do it as if it's in my own body examine the pleura measure the dimensions of the specimen The bronchial and the vascular margins are the hilum of the lung, which include the cut ends of the tight vessels and adjacent soft tissues, are identified. These must be sampled before the lung is sectioned. The vessels are easily identified with the help of threads. The parenchymal cut margin is stapled, and the staples have to be removed. You need to do this because the staples cannot be cut. Once this is done, the area is painted. The paint is fixed with two percent acetic acetic acid, or it is allowed to dry. The location of the tumor is palpated, and the tumor is either sectioned along major airways. or multiple transverse sections or sagittal sections made to transect and expose the tumor according to the preference of the examining pathologist in this case i have cut the lung along the major airways give the location of the tumor the size of the tumor and the appearance and consistency of the tumor measure the distance from the bronchovascular cut margin the parenchymal cut margin take the parenchymal cut margin one needs to take at least uh, four sections of the tumor in this case i have included the hilar structures with a section of the tumor also include part of normal lung with the tumor it is easy to cut a well fixed lung measure the distance of the tumor from the pleura and take sections of the tumor with the overlying pleura to look for involvement of the visceral pleura we also examine the surrounding lung and take at least one block if it looks normal more if there is any obvious abnormality the entire of the remaining lung Should be thinly sliced to look for any obvious lesions. If we just have no chest wall structures included, take them. Dissect out the hilar lymph nodes and sample them adequately. So these are the sections of the lungs: the bronchovascular cut margin, the parenchymal cut margin, adjacent lung, and lymph nodes. 
There is another method of cutting the lung and this is by taking transverse sections. The lung is cut from the apex to base and we get sequential slices. These are all laid out and once this is done, it is rather easy to identify the lesion and take sections of the lesion. Another advantage of this method is that it provides good correlation with CT and MR findings. Any small lesion is also easily evident. So uh, this is uh, in, in short about how we, we gross the lung and uh, with the video I will illustrate it the same. Uh, now let's, let's discuss some potential practical difficulties uh, uh, when we are de dealing with the lung specimens. Uh, so there can be the, the, the problems when we are, you gross these specimens, they, you can encounter when distinguishing between the various uh, T1, T2, T3 lesions because the, uh, the earlier classification were based on the location, size and the invasion of the, uh, of the adjacent structures. And uh, another problematic area, if, if you are seeing more than one lesion, because that is another common uh, thing uh, which can be observed in the lung, is it a, uh, is there multiple synchronous or metachronous primary or is it a intrapulmonary metastasis? So I will just uh, discuss uh, these points briefly. Uh, first, uh, based on the location, uh, so earlier uh, class TNM staging uh, uh, has given a very uh, uh, has uh, given a very relevance to the carina and the distance of the tumor from the from the carina but for pathologist it becomes used to become very difficult uh, because in many cases um, the, 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 the carina structures was was not there especially now uh, with the uh, with the small surgery small specimens like lobectomy and the sleeve resections you will not see uh, the carina so and it becomes very difficult for pathologists to uh, to you know, evaluate the tumor based on the distance from the carina and we have to, re to to rely only on the radiological inputs so uh, now in the new uh, in the latest uh, aids tnm classification uh, so if any tumor which involves the bronchus then irrespective of the distance uh, it can it can be it, it it will be labeled as a d2 if it is not involving the carina and t4 if it involves the carina so there are and there is no t3 or uh, t3 it is only t t2 or uh, t2 or t4 uh, next uh, the important thing is about the size of the tumor because the t staging is based only on is mainly on the uh, on the size of the tumor and uh, with increased screening in in the lung cancers uh, every centimeter counts so we have to be very judicious while evaluating is uh, that uh, the size of the tumor so uh, first and foremost important question arise how uh, or and when to measure the, the tumor because uh, we uh, we don't open the specimens and put it in the, uh, the formalin and formalin might shrink uh, the specimen so but it is recommended now that the perfusion fixation it causes uh, uh, very less shrinkage as compared to if you slice the specimen and, and fix it so the uh, Although there is a small uh, reduction in the the T uh, size, uh, but with perfusion method it is it is less, and always uh, it is better to correlate that size with the radiology. Uh, another uh, problematic areas uh, when we evaluate the size is because certain uh, tumors uh, like which has a subsolid lesions. Uh, in those cases, the gross it is very diff many times it is difficult to assess the gross size exactly uh, because these uh, tumors like the the tumor which are lipidic predominant or mucinous adenocarcinoma they they have very uh, they have least stromal response. Uh, so grossly, uh, it is difficult for a, uh, for a person to evaluate the gross size uh, precisely. Uh, so uh, there is fair chances that these regions can be either under uh, undersized or maybe oversized uh, if you rely only the gross finding. There are uh, certain conditions uh, which uh, like uh, tuberculosis which is very rampant in India, there can be extensive peritumoral reactions and in those cases uh, the you might over uh, overcall the exact tumor size and upstage the disease. So hence it is recommended uh, always to uh, confirm the gross size by 
microscopically and uh, especially uh, the size is, is, is has become very relevant especially in the early stage uh, cancers or which are of size less than less than 3 cm uh, in which the distinction between T1 and adenocarcinoma is, is C2, CY2 is based purely on the T size. Uh, so just to uh, elaborate uh, these uh, these lesions a little bit more. Uh, so what are the subsolid lesions? Uh, subsolid lesions means uh, the lesions which appears uh, as a ground glass uh, uh, on, on imaging, and uh, so these lesions has uh, appears as a hazy increased area on CT scan, but uh, without any uh, obscuring the underlying bronchial stru bronchial structures or pulmonary vessels. So these lesions grossly uh, they some many times you uh, you will not even able to pick them up or they may appear as a slightly firm or like the area of a consolidation and microscopically it, it these lesions has usually have a lipidic uh, pattern so when evaluating the size of these lesions uh, what we have to see there this, this these tumors uh, can have a two component that is one is an invasive and a non-invasive component non-invasive component means a tumor which with which has a purely lipidic growth pattern and invasive uh, either the tumor has a desmoplastic response or the any other morphological pattern besides the lipidic uh, carcinomas so we have to measure and confirm uh, the uh, the invasive component only because that uh, that decides the T stage. Like in this case, uh, if you measure the whole area, it is uh, around 2.8 centimeter, and it uh, uh, if you go as per that side, it becomes T1C. But the actual invasive component is less than one uh, centimeter. And just to give you another uh, illustration of of the same, uh, uh, like. It, if you go as per the eighth TNM, this lesion of one point around one point six centimeter is a T1 tumor, but actually it is a microinvasive carcinoma because the invasive component is less than five millimeter. Uh, Sometimes uh, you f might uh, feel difficulties in evaluating the the tumor size, especially on micro microscopically, because there can the tumor can be multifocal or uh, there can be associated either uh, scarring in the lung or underlying bronchiectectic like changes and the actual tumor com tumor size is very less so uh, recom it is recommended in such uh, just to avoid uh, difficulties in evaluating these cases it's always better to map uh, to map the cancer uh, and take uh, uh, representative uh, sections and and keep this uh, uh, sketch uh, uh, sketch handy so that you can uh, calculate the tumors uh, the, the actual the size uh, size of the lesion as well as the invasive component more carefully and as i mentioned earlier the only the invasive component decides the uh, the uh, the t size so the, the invasive size can be measured by the measurement of the solid areas uh, like the uh, which is to be confirmed by microscopically and the T size uh, you have if if, if if there are multiple uh, uh, or discrete areas you have to get the percentage of the invasive car carcinoma and uh, and uh, multiply it with the tumor size. This 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 is the just uh, briefly uh, to to tell you. Uh, uh, the, which I already described about the subcentrimetric nodules and uh, it becomes very relevant in the early stage cancer. So uh, this is this was about the, the uh, size of the lesion and the next thing is about the, the, the adjacent uh, uh, look to uh, always we need to look for the adjacent lung uh, and uh, why it is relevant to look uh, because there can be a either uh, separate primary or, uh, or, or, or solid nodules and uh, there, there might be at uh, at electrosis of this so uh, if 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 you have if you have a multiple uh, nodules in the lung it is uh, very important to identify them and why it is relevant because it might uh, change the stage of the of the disease so if you find the nodules in the same lobe uh, as illustrated here it becomes a t3 it is a t3 disease but 
if it is in another lobe, uh, so that it upstages the disease to T4. And if, so, and if the lesion is in the opposite lung, uh, then it becomes a metastatic or M1 disease. So, hence it is very important uh, to, to, ident to, 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 to identify whether these lesions are either uh, intrapulmonary metastasis or a second, uh, second primary. Uh, so, how to uh, do it? It is difficult to uh, evaluate that on gross examination and uh, we should not make a comment based purely on the on the gross examination we have to we have to uh, tell uh, uh, see the microscopic scopy of these uh, uh, these cases uh, very caref carefully so uh, just uh, to show how to do do it uh, if the morphologically the two tumors uh, they are of uh, different uh, mor uh, different morphology that means you are dealing with a two tumors not a not a single uh, single tumor and we have to stage them the, both the lesions separately but if uh, if uh, if that uh, it has a, uh, is the same cell type like uh, uh, i just uh, go, go with us if it has a squamous large cell or neuroendocrine morphology then try to look for the cytological features if uh, they are completely different then there will be, there will be two separate uh, primaries but uh, uh, in case of adenocarcinoma we have to pay attention to the uh, to the histological patterns also so if like uh, uh, it is illustrated in this uh, uh, picture uh, like if there are there are two tumors uh, one is showing adenocarcinoma histo uh, morphology and other is squamous that means it, there is a likelihood of two separate tumors and we have to uh, give separate dnm for both uh, uh, another example where the two, there are two tumors and both are showing same uh, morphology. In these cases, we have to see the location of the tumor, whether it is in the same lobe or in the uh, in the another lobe. If it is in the same lobe, it is T3. Otherwise, it is become T4. So this is the way we can predict uh, uh, that either we are dealing with the uh, the uh, with the intrapulmonary metastasis or there are separate primaries. But uh, now uh, uh, the recommendations are uh, going for uh, more for the, if you have encounter such issues, it's better to do the genomic profiling separately for uh, both the tumors because the genomic profile of the two uh, tumors might be different. Uh, moving on uh, from the from the multi concept of multiple tumors, uh, there is another important uh, thing which uh, is about the atelectasis or obstructive pneumonia. Uh, so it it was uh, uh, in earlier TNM seven classification. Uh, the if it is uh, if you see the uh, obstructive. Uh, uh, pneumonia, uh, if it is partial then it is T2 or uh, if it is complete then it is T3 but now in the 8th GNM uh, any sort of the obstructive pneumonia it, it, it will be put as a T2 rather than because the distinction of these is also uh, sometimes very difficult uh, for the for the pathologist. Uh, now moving ahead uh, uh, Men now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, many of the patients they receive neoadjuvant therapy, and uh, after after the therapy, the 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 uh, the patient uh, many times become uh, are become amenable for the surgical resections, and in these cases, uh, the, the various histological uh, uh, features you can encounter right uh, right from the complete necrosis to the to the inflammation. Or, uh, uh, or degenerative tumor cells and, and the fibrosis. So how to evaluate these cases is, uh, is also again uh, again uh, uh, a matter of debate because uh, uh, in this situation, this uh, limited sampling will not help. So earlier, uh, there are some recommendations for there to, to take one sections uh, one section from the, uh, the from the di largest diameter and evaluate for the uh, for the, the presence of viral tumor cells necrosis and stromal response uh, but recently uh, the international association of uh, study of lung cancer has come up uh, uh, with the uh, with the uh, recommendation and guidelines to how to uh, process uh, these specimens because many times uh, these uh, 
when uh, 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 they decide the uh, for the outcome of the, of of these expensive therapies. So, uh, as per the recommendations, the the there are two cutoffs uh, were if the viber tumor is less than ten percent, then that is labeled as a major pathological response. And if you don't see any uh, complete loss of viber tumor cells, that is called as as a complete uh, pathological response. And uh, how to to do it? Uh, so rather than uh, rather than going for individual sections or a slide, uh, it is now recommended to evaluate the tumor bed uh, in which uh, we we see the three components: uh, uh, viber tumor, necrosis, and, and stroma. And the residual tumor is given as a percentage of uh, uh, viable tumor divided by the tumor bed. So uh, it is not only the we have to see the viable uh, tumor cells when evaluating the percentage. Uh, we have to make attempt uh, that you are uh, evaluating the complete tumor bed and how it is being it is done. It is now it is recommended uh, to take uh, slice the tumor at multiple levels and the the largest area. Uh, it sh it should be completely sampled as illustrated in these in these these pictures. You have to do the extensive sampling, and along with that, a thorough. Uh, uh, we have to map these areas so that uh, you can actually uh, actually see in which uh, uh, particular area the tumor is is viable. So the recommendations, especially when you are dealing with the post treated specimens. Uh, so if this lesion is grossly, if it is small, uh, less than three centimeter, it, it should be entirely submitted. If it is larger than three centimeter, then every point the section should be taken uh, at every point five five centimeter. And as I showed in the previous pictures, so the, the, these should be should be mapped uh, properly so that the corresponding blocks can be superimposed uh, and a proper correlation can be made out. Uh, in, in addition to the sampling of the of the tumor, uh, periphery uh, of uh, should also include at least one centimeter of the surrounding non-neoplastic lung parenchyma. That means you have to not only sample the uh, grossly visible tumor, but also the edge of the tumor. And if there's you grossly you are not able to mark up, make out anything in those particular cases, we have to. Uh, uh, to submit the uh, the area which shows fibrosis or uh, or for any form areas those has to be sampled. So this is the new thing which is uh, now uh, 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 now uh, it, this paper also came in, uh, last year only. So uh, all the cases which have received any sort of therapy we have to do a uh, meticulous and uh, gross examination including the uh, the sampling as earlier used to be done uh, for the cases of uh, uh, post or uh, post therapy osteosarcomas or the or the bone tumors and sometimes uh, it becomes difficult also to uh, evaluate the exact size so in this in situation if there are multiple foci as uh, illustrated here in those cases the percentage of viable cell if you divide by the the total tumor bed size it might give the total uh, the exact tumor size and hence um, we can uh, stage this these lesions more precisely rather than giving a, a rough estimate so uh, major pathological response or a, a complete response uh, it act as a surrogate endpoint for the survival in many clinical trials so it becomes a responsibility of a pathologist to <coughs> Uh, to evaluate these things very more care carefully, and uh, although it take uh, for this, uh, we have to take uh, do extensive sampling at increase the cost on the lab. But uh, if you are to ev give a, a precise report, we have to sample them more carefully. So this was about the uh, the lung specimen. Moving on to the lymph nodes. Uh, lymph nodes uh, they has to be sampled uh, and uh, section as per the I. ASLC node node state uh, nodal atlas and all stations uh, need to be sampled and uh, processed separately. You should not mix the mix the nodes to, together. And uh, uh, so these are the various stations which uh, uh, for uh, which are uh, for which you receive the the lymph nodes and uh, according to the. These lymph node status, uh, stations involvement, the stage, the disease is staged as N1, N2, or N3. Uh, 
and any node uh, and many times we do get uh, these uh, nodes as fragmented so the number of positive nodes uh, doesn't matter so stations matter and if there any node which is uh, less than uh, uh, less than 0.5 cm it should be bisected but if it is more uh, larger than that so it is recommended to serially slice uh, slice them and uh, embed the whole node so so any node which is larger than 0.5 cm it should be uh, serially sliced and each each and every bit should be evaluated properly so to summarize uh, these are the various sections which we have to take uh, when we are grossing the lung specimens say the sections uh, of the tumor along with the hilum along with the pleura and the, with the airways for adequacy of the of the various margins we have to sample the vascular bronchial and parenchymal cut margin all lymph nodes uh, which are sent separately which have those, those need to be uh, uh, sampled uh, and blocked separately uh, attempt has to make uh, it has to be made to look for any lymph nodes in the hilum Uh, and from the adjacent uh, lung, if take minimum two sections, and but if you see any additional pathology like satellite nodule or consolidation, those need to be sampled. And uh, this uh, is just to summarize the changes which happened in the seventh uh, from seven to eight TNM. Uh, as compared to the seven TNM, now the lesions which are less than three centimeter, which they are further subdivided into T one A, B, and and C. Uh, And in in T two T two lesions uh, earlier the cut off was was up to five to seven centimeter which has uh, now if any tumor which is more than five centimeter it becomes a T three lesion and uh, any lesion which is more than seven centimeter is now a T four tumor and as I mentioned uh, earlier also the distance uh, from the carina is not. Uh, uh, is is changed and the any tumor which is involving the the bronchus uh, irrespective of the distance from the carina is t2 and if it involves the carina then only it becomes t4 and uh, invasion of the diaphragm earlier it was a t3 region now it becomes t4 so it, it's sometimes it's become difficult uh, to remember all these and it's better to keep these uh, uh, this photo, photo photograph uh, in your put in put in your lab so that you can easily uh, remember uh, and where to put these this these lesions uh, based on the Uh, on the based on the gross as well as the microscopic uh, findings, and uh, at the last, uh, it is now recommended to use the uh, a, a plate so that you should not miss anything. And uh, this is the template which we use in our hospital, uh, and um, this uh, these templates are were also now. Uh, uploaded on the national cancer uh, grid website so if anyone of you like to use the uh, use this you can um, you can use them and if you have to see towards the end of your report uh, you have to give up uh, not only the precise diagnosis uh, the diagnosis but uh, also a comment about the exact tnm stage staging and about the resections margin should be should be made so these are the few of the digital resources which i uh, which are available so these are the this template uh, so this is the link for the uh, for, for that uh, the template for the thoracic specimens uh, which is available on the national cancer grid website and uh, you can use any other resources also like cap uh, iccr or rc rc path uh, but uh, you, you these protocols you should not go Uh, point to point, you, you you can modify them as per your your own requirement, and uh, so that so towards the end, you should not should be able to give a more precise and uh, uh, precise and uh, precise as well as a comprehensive report, so that it will help the clinician and the patient. With this, I end my presentation, uh, and uh, if there are any comments or questions, I will be happy to, happy to take them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rajiv Kaushal. Excellent presentation. You really have worked hard on that, and you have really, uh, you know, put the whole grossing of lung specimen into perspective. Uh, there is a comment by Dr. Professor Manoj Choudhury. Very good and excellent discussion. We'll be waiting on the YouTube to see if there are any questions. Just for a minute. Before that, let me uh, let me request you that. 
after the presentation is completely done please share the pdf of that in on the email so that we can share it with the students it will be very very helpful for them especially sure. please remember majority of the students and the people who are listening and hearing and going through these uh, versions are from the peripheral medical colleges and they do not get access to the level of teaching or explanation or the specimen handling process which uh, you uh, at uh, Tata Memorial Hospital you know which you are doing it uh, as a routine process so your experience and your teaching would be definitely a lot of help to them and if you share the PDF it will be it will do wonders to them it will be like a guideline and wonderful presentation with especially with the with the new AJCC 8th edition and the very modifications and thing and the fact that you took effort in trying to put two videos there for explaining everything how to preserve and how to cut wonderfully done let me be you know, it's very very well done let me see if there are any questions on the YouTube in the meantime you can comment yeah I, thanks a lot for your uh, uh, for your comments and uh, appreciation and uh, I agree that uh, the lung specimens although they are not uh, very common specimens and uh, these because these surgeries need a very uh, very good uh, good setup not of uh, not only of the thoracic surgeon but uh, a post uh, good, very good post uh, post operative care so but now as uh, many onco surgeons are getting trained so many peripheral centers you will see uh, these specimens more frequently in, in the coming years and especially now with the uh, coming more uh, targeted therapies uh, and immunotherapies which might shrink the tumor uh, tumor to a large extent and we will come across uh, these specimens more frequently uh, as compared to earlier when the lung cancer is presumed to be an unresectable disease true absolutely dr sukanya mondal says wonderful presentation thank you so much sir yes indeed a very wonderful presentation very crisp to the point and very nicely explained on how to take sections how to you know embed them how to put them in how to fix the tissues wonderfully done thank you so much dr rajiv i think next monday we are again having you with yeah, another set of topic yeah and it will be wonderful to hear you you are an expert in this you know this uh, system so I, it's nice that you will be here to teach us all and show us the new things in the system thank you so much take care bye bye good night yeah, thanks a lot sir good night thank you. please share the pdf sir right okay thank you bye Thank you.